Welcome to the last set news. Take a top stories in crypto and bring around a bite sized pieces. So, today, just as the thumbnail suggests, is the mother of all crashing coming in? And that is the theory as proposed by Michael Burry of the big short fame. So, we'll take a look at uh, why that could potentially uh, be true. And uh, really, we're going to dig down into it and just talk about why it's probably not. Also, we'll take a look at what the big uh, hubbub is about Solana going crazy. Also, the uh, USDC partnership. And we're going to take a look at uh, have an interview with Unstoppable Domain CEO Brad Kahn, or Brad Cam. And then also we'll do uh, final thoughts. So today it is Monday. You may notice my uh, voice is a little bit better. Uh, just getting over a cold or a flu or something. And uh, yeah, not so bad. Just a little bit tired. But uh, here we are. And uh, what a great last week, and even this week, doing pretty good. So it is uh, August 16th, and uh, here's the numbers as they are. So Bitcoin holding out pretty steady. We're looking at, uh, ooh, what are we, uh, 45, almost 46. So over seven days, 6%, pretty good. ETH is down a little bit, and there is Cardano down 4.5%. But look at those runs over seven days, almost 50%. But that's not the big story. Cardano did great, but uh, there's some other ones that just absolutely blew it up. Look at XRP, 57% for the week. Now it's down 10%, but uh, hey, you know what? XRP's on a tear, watch out. Dogecoin, it was up massively because uh, Cuban, Mark Cuban came out and said that uh, it's the ultimate form of payment, which uh, he agreed with the, uh, the car salesman. And uh, sure, let's see how that works out for him. I have nothing against Dogecoin. I just don't know uh, because it seems like uh, there's just a very limited amount of wallets that hold the vast majority of Dogecoin. And uh, I don't know how many developers are on there, but uh, we'll see how it all works out. If you're a Dogecoin holder, congratulations, uh, you're up. Stablecoins, DOT, and everything else. But look at Solana here, 74% up. And then also, I think there was another big one uh, where we had Luna up 71%. But Solana has just been an absolute tear. And uh, I own both. I own Solana and Luna. And uh, again, I always thank uh, James from Invest Answers and uh, uh, Mike for Mike the Investor getting me onto Solana. But 74% in a week. And today, one of the big winners at 20%. So we're going to take a look at potentially why it is and what Solana is all about just real quick. So what I really want to do is let's just break into today's top story because I was just perusing the news on Twitter and whatnot, and I, this came up, and I was like, wow, that's, uh, that's kind of negative. So what do we have here? So Michael Burry, Michael Burry of Big Short fame, he bets against Kathy Wood's arc. So when you see something like this, I wanted to bring this out uh, because, in all honesty, this is a FUD article. This, is, this could potentially be spreading fear uncertainty and doubt. So hopefully by you clicking on this video and that fantastic thumbnail that I made, uh, hopefully you're not here. You're here to get the, the the real inside story, the real scoop, and not just click on it and go, that's FUD and dislike and unsubscribe and da da da. Because on this channel, uh, look, I'm not here to uh, be super positive all the time. I'm here to be a realist. And when I see stuff like this, if it concerns me enough to stop and pay attention, I think it might concern other people. So I want to talk about this article and just bring it to light. Because if we don't talk about the FUD articles and just kind of push them to the side, and then we only talk about the good stuff, what happens is, is that all the newbies that, that get into it don't understand everything. They're like, oh, this is awful. I got to get out of here. And, da, da, da. and before you know it, we got a mass exodus. So let's just talk about this story, shall we? All right. So... Burry, Michael Burry's Scion Asset Management, owned bearish put contracts against 235,000 plus shares of the ARK Innovation ETF, ticker ARK, the Innovation ETF, all about cryptocurrencies and stuff, at the end of the second quarter. The new position was valued at almost $31 million. That's pretty good. And uh, Burry has been warning uh, about unsustainable valuations in the market for months in June. He cautioned that retail investors could be getting drawn into the mother of all crashes by investing in cryptocurrencies and meme stocks. And uh, I got to tip my hat to him. Great timing. because <laughs> He kind of called it because after that, there was the, a pretty big uh, uh, pullback. And we saw Bitcoin, you know, around April or May or something like that, uh, go from 64,000 down to 30, 29, 28,000. So yeah, yeah, that was a pretty big crash. But he is still going uh, even further. A put contract gives Cyan the right to sell shares in the ETF before a certain date. 
and a previously agreed price, value increases if shares drop below the threshold, the exact terms of the puts, and when they were purchased are undisclosed. So I want to make something uh, very abundantly clear here. So for these for these put options, uh, he doesn't have to exercise that those rights. It's not like uh, shorting a stock uh, where you know you you actually sell those things first. Uh, he has the option to not. Uh, exercise that right now he will owe uh, a little bit uh, to to get that contract out but he doesn't have to exercise it whatsoever so when we take a look at these uh, uh, put and options and things like that just uh, know that take away the grain of salt because that's just a pretty big bet and really there is massive upside uh, if he is correct uh, I don't think he's going to be correct but uh, and I'll tell you why in a second but he does not have to exercise these and that's the whole thing uh, with these types of puts or put contracts. And then the big thing here is the exact time of the puts and when they were purchased are undisclosed. Brewery has been indirectly betting against Wood for some time via a big position against Tesla, one of ARK's top picks and biggest holdings. So here's the thing. So when we take a look at all these stuff and we go, well, that's, that's pretty awful. But uh, you have to understand that um, these, these puts, I mean, they could be, the, there is no real... It doesn't say the time frame. There's no actual uh, definitive information about when those can be exercised or not. So it can go on for a very long time, and uh, it could happen. I mean, we could see uh, quite a bit of a, of a big uh, pullback or retracement because that's pretty much what happens in crypto, and, and Michael knows that. It's not like it's going to happen tomorrow. Uh, it's not like it's going to happen uh, next week or whenever else. So just take it with a grain of salt. And also, there's another thing I want to talk about. Michael Burry is famous uh, for the big short for the 2008 uh, crash, uh, as far as like uh, for all of the different housing markets that just uh, decimated uh, the global economy essentially for for quite a long time, and that was one way to play it. It was a it was a pretty good you know short of the market worked out pretty well, but uh, it was another way to play it. And uh, I had a friend here, his name uh, is David, and uh, he had a great. Uh, theory, which was he was just going to wait for all the houses to drop precipitously and then pick them up. So what he did was, I, I know when we talk in this channel about cryptocurrency and and uh, how people think that cash is trash, cash isn't really trash. Cash in this situation was king because what he did was he let the price valuation of all those houses and all those units and all those uh, commercial properties drop 50, 60, 70%. And uh, when they were down, you know, you have like a $200,000 house go to like $60,000. He scooped up a bunch and uh, he is a multi, multi millionaire back then. And now he is like way beyond that. And all he did was just pick them up. And then in a year, two years later, he sold them for a massive profit. And some he didn't, some he sold and some he just held on to and actually just, you know, rented them out. And now he doesn't really have to do much of anything. He was already a millionaire, so it really didn't matter. So again, when you take a look at these stories, don't look at it like, oh, this is happening tomorrow, or this is going to happen next week. Uh, Bernie knows that this is really the long game, and he could be right uh, later on. We're all waiting. Even if you have the theory of uh, elongated cycles, like maybe you don't think that it's going to, uh, the whole bull market's going to end right on December 31st. Uh, maybe it could go in January, February, or March, uh, where we see that big hockey stick. When that happens, maybe exercise them at that point. So uh, I just want to bring this to everybody's attention. And we talk about FUD stories. It's not like it's the end of the world. All right. So let me know what you think about that in the comment section. Now let's get into Solana and why this thing is just going crazy. So Solana, uh, I was checking their Twitter feed. And uh, I have to tell you, I've been dollar cost averaging Solana for months now. And uh, it's like one of the best ones I've done so far. Uh, and then Solana, this was a couple, three or four days ago, and it talks about uh, Solend is here. Solend is now live on Solana, on Solana mainnet at solend.fi. So I took a look at this real quick, and this is the autonomous interest rate machine for Solana. But just so you know, total assets supplied 5.2 million, total assets borrowed 1.4 million. So this is a very, uh, very early stage. And Solana hasn't been around for a whole heck of a lot of time. Actually, if we take a look at this, and bring this up. Let me blow this up here so you can see it. If we take a look at, let's scroll down and go to all time, or let's go max. Yeah. So look at this. Back in the day, <laughs> April 2020, I mean, they're looking at the very uh, beginning because it was 95 cents. Jeez Louise. 
and just didn't do much of anything for quite some time. But in only, gosh, a year, a year plus some change, they are making massive headway and they're in the top 10 already. And they already have uh, DeFi, looks like it. Uh, looks like they have massive partnerships and it looks like they're doing the right thing. So Solana is just one of those things that uh, has just been blowing up. So, but why? Why is this one going through? So it could be something like this where uh, Solend, I don't really think so. But also, uh, you've got these things called quick nodes. Uh, boost your Solana endpoint in seconds, not days. We make it simple to power your blockchain applications and scale up as you grow. And it's from Ian. He says, quick nodes are super easy to set up with just one line of code. They provide support for multiple chains and make it easy to scale as our usage increases. And there's a pricing thing down here. So eh, maybe something like that. That looks like a pretty big win for Solana. And then also you have to remember that uh, Solana, uh, they've also got a nice... A little coupling with USDC. And this was actually from Jeremy Allaire. He is the uh, head of Circle, which uh, are the ones that created USDC, which I am a big fan of myself. And he says, uh, this was just a, uh, gosh, what is it, three days ago or so? No, August 10th, excuse me. So we're looking at six, roughly six days ago. And he, said, and he says, hey, huge shout out to Solana team. Now with 1 billion USDC in circulation. And uh, people are just building on Solana and ma massive things are going. So I always see like these big projects doing really good things. Uh, sorry, big projects that are, are uh, partnering up with USDC uh, because I think stablecoin, this stablecoin essentially is going to do very well. So, I mean, Circle partnership with Visa already. And then, uh, of course, Circle is also, uh, we just covered this a couple of days ago where they're trying to become a, a national digital currency, full reserve bank, not fractional reserve, but a full reserve bank and everything else in there. So, I mean, that's huge. And then this is from uh, the Circle blog post. And this is what I found most interesting. I, I think if you're going to really get into mass adoption, I think Solana kind of hits it on the head because you want something uh, easy and you want something cheap and you want something fast. Well, uh, Solana supports more than 50,000 transactions per second. Let me say that again. 50,000 TPS per second. I think Bitcoin does uh, 9 to 13. I think Ethereum does around 45 TPS. And uh, I mean, these are the legacy systems. I mean, now with E2.0 coming around, maybe it uh, definitely will hopefully scale up. But when? How long is that going to take? I don't know. Uh, but it says 50, 50K TPS with block production and settlement finality in 400 microseconds and extremely low transaction fees of a fraction of a cent. Let that sink in. A fraction of a cent. Wouldn't that be nice? to not have to transfer Ethereum and things that are being built, because everything's being built on Ethereum, but you only use a fraction of a cent. And these are the things that are coming. That's why I, uh, I hold a lot of Ethereum, but uh, I have to tell you, I'm not sure uh, how much it can uh, maintain that uh, top spot. There's always somebody behind you who wants to do it. And then there was this great video here. I'm not going to play it, uh, but this is uh, Antoli uh, Yoko, Yoko Venko founder and CEO of Solana. And he just talks about how easy it was to actually partner up with uh, USDC and how it actually all worked out and uh, how they were like actual innovators. So when I take a look at this, I just think to myself, I think Solana is just doing the right things and they're doing the right things at the right time. And they're just massively scaling up by just grabbing in partners and doing a lot of great things. And uh, I think this could be a massive, uh, big project and maybe a top five, but who knows? So that is what is going on uh, with Solana and USDC and everything else. Now, what I want to talk about real quick is because I, if we look at the, the good projects that are partnering up with the stable coins, uh, we covered this a couple of weeks ago when I was in Puerto Rico, actually, how Unstoppable Domains, they actually partnered up with them. So you can actually, instead of here, I'll just show you this graphic. It's a lot easier to show you this. Instead of you, uh, someone asking you, hey, can I send you USDC or send you crypto? Yeah, just send it to 0x53573541. Like, what the heck was that? So you can just go over and stop all domains and purchase uh, your name, joeblow.coin, and then they can send you USDC. It's pretty simple. And uh, I just look at these things and I'm like, this is the, these are the things that will lead to mass adoption. I want it cheap. I want it fast and I don't care about what's going on underneath the hood. Just make sure it gets me there. And I think that's where we're at. So what I want to do is I want to bring in uh, one of the founders of Unstoppable Domains, uh, Brad Cam. I want to talk to him about if this is true, what uh, the CEO of Solana said about how easy it is to actually partner up and work 
with uh, Circle and USDC and uh, what's going on with Unstoppable Domains. So let's just jump right in. One of the, the founders of Unstoppable Domains, Brad Cam, just to talk to him, just ask him some questions about, is it really that easy to work with Circle and getting USDC integration and what's and how tough was that and what's the plans for the future? So Brad, thanks again for coming on and taking time to talk to us on the show. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Glad yeah. to be here. Yeah. So yeah, thanks, man. So just talk to us. I mean, first of all, you guys are crushing it out there. You guys are doing everything, everything you're supposed to do as far as a business and getting things going. But talk to us about how it led up to you guys actually talking with Circle, this multi-billion dollar company, and going, hey, let's integrate USDC uh, into a domain and NFT as far as like dot coin. So um, I've been following uh, Circle, the company, for, for quite a long time. Uh, and right now so now they're they're very they're essentially a, a b2b company so they're providing services for other crypto companies right uh, but at one point you know i think maybe five or six years ago uh they were trying to build a consumer app and the whole idea was to abstract the crypto parts away make it super duper easy for people to just send digital dollars or whatever currency they wanted to anyone in the world uh super easy like like a decentralized venmo uh so uh, I, I knew they had been you know, big believers in this vision for many, many years, uh, but they'd gone a slightly different direction with the with the business. So they were just kind of a obvious fit because they're sort of in a similar place as, as we are actually um, trying to integrate their tech, in this case, USDC, uh, into all these different crypto wallets and exchanges. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. And how 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 easy was it to actually work with them? Because it seems like some companies, it's all it's like uh, trying to pull teeth with getting things done. And other companies are like, hey, let's just let's just go forward. You know, here's what you need. Let us know, and then off we go. Uh, super easy. They're 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 hustlers. They're they're moving fast right now. And uh, you can just see this uh, from looking at the USDC market cap uh, over the past year or two. Like it's just going like this. Um, um, so yeah great yeah that's what we need because i mean it seems like every day things change so fast and then was this as far as like stable coins go was this like the big one that for you know for you guys to get or, or has any any other other stable coins reached out like a tether or something like that well so you know in terms of the way that you know the way that unstoppable domains works like you can attach any cryptocurrency right uh to any domain name that you want uh it's really a question of like who is being encouraged to, to use it? So um, USDC is the only the only stablecoin uh, stablecoin um, uh, partner we have currently. Uh, but but the whole the whole idea there is uh, to get pe people who would be integrated both with Circle and with Unstoppable Domains uh, to be using Dotcoin for their USDC payments by default. Like have the addresses just uh, automatically assigned whenever you get a domain name uh, inside of whatever app you're using. Yeah. Make it like so easy that all you really need to do is just start telling me what your username is uh, and it works. Yeah, man, that's that's perfect. Then and, and that's what I'm talking about here with this one. Cause when we take a look at it, like for everybody who sells online, you're usually gonna use like uh, a PayPal or a Stripe and you're looking at between 1.99% or 2.99% plus 30 cents per, per transaction fee. So if you have something like this, like Brad, like what you're just talking about, just like what you guys do perfectly, you get a domain, you set it up and all of a sudden you have this dot coin, your first name, your last name, your first, whatever else it is, it just makes it very seamless. And that's what I like about this because if we're looking for mass adoption, we have to do these things. No one's gonna say, hey, what's your address? Oh, it's 0x53572589999, whatever else. I think it's just best just to go Joe Smith dot coin and that's it. And something that's been pretty, you know, pretty, pretty smart that Circle is focused on. That I think you you've already highlighted recently uh, with the uh, billion dollars of USDC on Solana is that they've been uh, blockchain agnostic in terms of where the USDC is actually living. And so what winds up happening for the user is is that you can have your app just say, "Hey, what's the cheapest place to send mm -hmm. USDC right now?" Okay, I'm gonna send using this one, and that mm -hmm. is. I mean, that's, that's awesome. Like, I mean, if you think about it from the user experience perspective, like, do they really care uh, if it's this blockchain or that blockchain? They probably care a lot more about fees. That's like the thing they care about. And if it's USDC on all these different chains, so that, that's another thing the Circle's focused on um, that's been quite, I would say, quite important uh, from a user experience perspective. 
yeah, that makes sense. It's almost like using a hotels.com. I don't care. I mean, I care kind of where I stay, but I want to make sure it's, it's cheap and good. And if I can do both those things and just shop around, yeah, it makes sense. Perfect. All right. And then Brad, finally, anything else that's going on? Cause you guys are always innovating. There's always some things going on. So anything else that's new uh, over there at unstoppable domains? I know there was a cake integration. Uh, yeah. So yeah, cake, cake wallet sending, uh, Sending uh, sending Monero, so that's a that's a you know a, a, a top Monero wallet, and you can uh, you can send a private payment to a public name. So that's a pretty oh. cool. Uh, that's a pretty cool idea. It's something that you can't get uh, currently with uh, networks like Bitcoin and Ethereum. So yeah. that's something that's kind of missing, so to speak, from the from the feature set uh, that uh, the private currencies can solve. So that's. Uh, I think that's a pretty cool use case. Uh, that's much closer to how my Venmo settings work. Uh, I set mine to private. I'm not. I'm not publishing them uh, to the world. So I think that's that's a reasonable uh, reasonable choice. Yeah, it makes sense. Well, I didn't know that. That's pretty cool. All right, sounds pretty good. All right, well, Brad, I appreciate it. I know that your your time is valuable. You got a lot of things to do. So everybody, if you're looking for that, just this is not financial advice. It's financial opinion. But if it's me. Uh, I'd like to get at least my name uh, as far as like uh, for dot coin or dot crypto or dot zo, whatever else you want, because in the future it might be uh, a little bit easier to use. Links in the description. That's it. Brad, thanks for coming on. We appreciate it. And uh, we'll reach out to see as uh, things progress. Thanks. All right. So that's it. So I hope that answered a lot of questions. Brad, thanks for coming on again. Uh, I appreciate it because when I look at these things, I just want to see. I just want to see how companies execute and I want to see how uh, the actual uh, product gets out there and how people are partnering up. And I think in the future, what we're going to see is all these different projects that can't survive by themselves. And I think they're going to start doing mergers and acquisitions. And I think the more uh, businesses and projects that actually start to work together and, and intermingle, I think are the ones that have a uh, better chance of success, of success like uh, Circle and Stop Old Mains and uh, Solana. So that's what's going on for today. So look, I know it was a little bit long, a lot of things going on, but uh, if you made it all the way in, first, thanks. I appreciate it. Also, if you liked the uh, video, give it a thumbs up. That always helps tremendously. Consider subscribing. A lot of things to talk about are time sensitive. And that's it for today. And uh, I have not forgotten about that Puerto Rico video. I think I'm going to do one, a double one today. I'm feeling pretty good, except my voice sucks. But uh, I want to do that real quick and just talk to you about uh, who my lawyer was, uh, who the agent was, and uh, my experiences, and just do like a two-parter. So I'll do that later, maybe today, and I'll put it out. So that's it for uh, this one. Thanks so much. I appreciate it, and I'll see you on the next one.